afternoon, friends. Welcome again to another edition of Adult Arts and Crafts from the Warren County Library. This is Mary Ellen, and today we're going to make ourselves a valentine. Um, we're going to use no tan art, which is a Japanese ter term for contrasting colors, a value of one or two against each other. And when I'm done making this, I'll tell you a little bit more about no tan art, but what we're going to do is we're going to use that contrast by making an abstract, colorful background, and then we're going to cut and paste another color on top, making that contrast when we make our heart. So I'm happy to see a couple of folks are here, and I hope that you want to make a Valentine for someone you care about, and uh, let's get started. You know, you could even make it for a gal. The Galentine's Day is the 13th, which is actually uh, a new holiday where we celebrate our friends, our girlfriends. So maybe you wanna make one for your girlfriend. So here's a couple that I have made. So you can see how easy they are that you might wanna make more than one. And so the first thing I'll do is show you the supplies that you need. I like to take tape my watercolor paper down onto a board. This is a very wet process, so we want it to dry flat. So it does help to tape your paper down to a board. I'm using uh, today the frog tape instead of masking tape. Um, I have found it really helps with seepage of color underneath the tape, and this is a very wet process, so it might be something you wanna try sometime to try the frog tape. So you'll need your, your paper. I'm using watercolor paper. You could use cardstock or something like that. And you're going to need uh, a baggie. I have a couple different sizes here. I actually drew a rectangle on this one baggie so I know the area of the picture that I'm going to transfer onto because that helps too. So, um, I have that. I'm also going to use a little baggie, a snack bag, because if I want to add a little bit of color somewhere, I can do that with a snack bag like this. Uh, let's see, what else do you want to have with you? You want to have uh, watercolor, or I'm using today the Tombow water, watercolor water-based pens. Any water-based pen will work with water to do the color transfer. If you're using an alcohol-based pen, you'll want to use alcohol for your transfer. The reason I prefer the water is because the alcohol has quite a smell. You will want some scissors to cut your heart, um, a pencil to draw your heart, and glue to glue it down. I've lately found a little tacky glue pen, which is really nice, and I'll show you how that works when I get to that. I'm going to spritz my water on with this little bottle that something else had come in and I took the label off. But you could use whatever spritzer you have when you do your ironing or you can just fling some water, your droplets with your fingers down on when we get to that part. So that's basically all the supplies you need. And we're going to create an abstract colorful picture as our background. So here's one that I did. Here's another one that I did. And what you're gonna to wanna to do then is let this dry before you put your heart on it. So um, you'll wanna dry it with a hair dryer or let it sit overnight to fully dry so it doesn't curl up. Because if you wanna hand this to someone as a card, you want it to be as flat as possible. So I'm gonna move those to the side and I'm going to demonstrate how to do this. So I'm gonna lay my baggie right next to my picture so you can see. And I'm going to randomly decide some colors that I like, and I'm going to just draw that right onto the baggie. Now, you might wanna think about not putting colors next to each other that uh, are basically complementary colors, colors that don't get along with each other. So if you put, for instance, your yellow right next to your purple, you might get a brownish color. Um, but I found I like to put all kinds of different colors and it doesn't seem to be a problem. As you can see, I'm drawing just little 
I don't know why, I just kind of like a little rectangle. Uh, if you want to do a circle, I'm going to grab some other colors here just to show you that all kinds of colors go well. I'm going to grab some yellow, put it over here, maybe a little bit over there. And this looks very odd, doesn't it? Here's some purple. So I'll do this entire process in front of you and you'll be amazed at the very beautiful abstract picture that you end up with, that if you tried to do it, it would be nearly impossible. I'm gonna add some green. So this has just about every color of the rainbow in it. I'll even throw in some orange, just because. All right, so <clears throat> the next thing I wanna do is spritz that, that plastic with the water and that's going to energize the color. So do you see when I wet it that it's starting to run and be wet? I'm going to now take this and I'm just going to flip it over right on top of my watercolor paper and now I'm just going to smoosh it around with my hand. And you see how you actually move the water around through the baggie? And you try to fill in those white spots. If you wanna leave white spots, certainly you can do that as well. And you'll know that this is how a lot of those calligraphy um, pictures are being done, where you have a wild background and then you have some calligraphy on top. This is how people are doing it. So now I'm gonna take my baggie off and I happen to have some paper towel here and I'm going to just do a quick wipe around the edge because it's a little bit more wet than the size of it. Now there are some puddles of color here. If you want to keep them, you could spritz some more water on there and move them around. I'll spritz a little water on there. Maybe grab my little, my little baggie, move it around up my baggie and wipe it off. Now, if you decide to do this project with children, you might want to start with a towel underneath your, your work surface in case they get carried away with the water situation. Now, I think this already looks really, really pretty, but what you might find is that you don't like the way yours is looking. You can continue to work on it when it's wet or you can add more color when it's dry. And I found with the small size baggie, I'm going to um, take some yellow. And if the picture is still wet, you can just add some color right into that area where it's wet. Added a little yellow there. I'm going to add a little, maybe a darker purple. So this is the part where you can really make it your own. If the picture is dry, add some more water to the plastic. If there's a puddle still on the paper, you can just add right there. So I'm going to add a little purple right there to add another shade. That looks pretty. Now you can always come back and dry something off if you don't like the way it looks and add some more. So I hope this shows how easy it is to make your background color. Um, I have come back time and time again and just added another color to a different place if I find it needs it. There's an awful lot of pink here. Um, what would I want to add to that pink? If I, <laughs> let's see, I'm gonna pick a different blue. Just put some here on my paper, on my plastic. Add a little water to it. And just see what that does for you. So I hope you can see how this works and how you can keep changing and changing it to get to the color that you want. I can spend quite a bit of time doing this 
and you can do it just as far as, as it's fun for you. I'm gonna add some more yellow into here, and then that blended that red into the yellow, and I wanna kinda take away that white spot. I like it color, colored all the way to the edge for this project because I wanna create enough contrast for when I put the white heart on the top. But depending what you were doing with it, you could leave it as is um, or whatever. So let me see that that's dry. I'm gonna grab one of these that is dry because you do have to wait for it to dry. This one's very colorful, so I think I'll work on this one so you can see. So to make the Valentine from it, I cut a square of cardstock, white cardstock, the same size as the picture that I started with. Because then I knew if I folded and cut a heart shape out of it, that heart would fit inside. Now you could see from my cards, let me grab one of these cards, they're underneath, I think that I set my heart a little bit and on an angle. I like the way that looked. You could do it however you wish. So I've got my, my square that's this size. I folded it right down the center. And then I'm going to sketch on there the shape of a heart. And so you can draw it however you want but you want it to fit inside there. And I know if I started with the same size and I came in at least a quarter or a half an inch on all size, sides, that that would um, eventually fit inside there. So then I'm going to cut my heart out. Try to hold it neatly by the camera so you can see. It's a neat little project. I saw this, a picture of this on Pinterest where many, many good ideas come from. So uh, there's the heart. Now I see it. you could put it this way, you could put it this way. Now the beauty of cutting these little, a uh, little bit more than quarter inch uh, sections out is it will end up making two hearts and I'll actually be able to make two pictures from one heart. So at this point, you can decide how big you want the smaller hearts. And I tried to stay around a half an inch or so inside. I'm just going to quickly show you. Now, however you do this, the part you cut away, you'll see the color behind. And the part you keep, you'll see the white paper. So it's pretty much a reverse cutting and this was very attractive to me because it, it reminded me of some of the cut work things that I made in quilting so it, it is very satisfying to see a, a mirror image type of uh, effect that this makes so at this point I'm going to cut on these lines and really you could do it a different direction it doesn't have to be as even I was attempting with mine to be as even as I could be so you see I'll have a, a big a big half a heart and a little smaller and then a little smaller as these uh, bits get cut That's... the beauty part is you if you're only making one you you won't even see your pencil line because you can use the side where the pencil wasn't showing. So let's get this one, last one here. Okay, so you see the graduated sections of heart. And ultimately, we're gonna cut those in half on the fold marks. Excuse me, I hate to sniff on camera. So you can easily see the fold marks and each one now I'm going to cut in half because we're going to only use the mirror image. So each one, and you can easily cut it right on that fold mark. 
where you folded it to cut. And each one is exactly the same shape. So you could, as I say, you're only gonna use half of these. You could make two pictures from this, which is pretty neat. And it's how you can get pretty fast on making a few of these and send them out to lots of family and friends. Okay, there's the tiniest one. So that's the only, the only one that's small. I hope, uh, there, I hope you can see each uh, heart shape is now cut in half. Now, in order to put it, uh, to glue it down, you might want to place it and just take a look at it. Do you see that the first piece you put is the biggest one? This next size down goes to the next size. The next size down goes to the right side. The next size down goes to the left side. Do you see how we are just reversing back and forth? And what I found is, since we are lining them up right next to each other, we can actually make a pencil line on the card where it's going to stand. So I'm just going to move these to the side to show you that I'm going to put it at a slight angle. I've done these before, I kind of like this angle. You can do it however you like. And I'm going to make a light pencil line. I'm not gonna go all the way to the bottom because I don't want, to, want you to see that line forever. And maybe the heart won't come down that far. I'm not exactly sure. And I'm using this glue pen and you could use any kind of glue that you have. This is a, um, an Aileen's glue pen that I got in um, Hobby Lobby. So I'm finding the line, the pencil line that I made, and I'm laying it down. Now I gotta move it down a little bit because it was gonna hit my, my tape, and I didn't wanna hit the tape because I haven't taken that off yet. So do you see, you glue the first one on, that's the biggest one. So it might come up very close to your uh, tape edges. Depending what kind of tape you used, you might have used a narrower tape. My tape is pretty thick. So the next one will line up, and you see it just touches the point that this one left off on, and it just touches the point here where this one begins at, and it follows that pencil line. And what it does is each one that you put on will cover the pencil line. Do you see what I'm showing you there? So I hope you can see my hands. I'm just using this. This is a neat little glue pen because it goes rather quickly. If you're using um, the tacky glue or something like that. It might take a little bit longer. Now the next size one will meet right there. Lay it down. And the neat thing is, as I say, you won't ever see that pencil line because this goes right on top of it. All right. That's the fussiest one, the little half a heart. And you see, I, I picked the ones that didn't have pencil marks. I turned them over so the pencil lines are to the back. I see a little bit of glue there I wanna wipe off. Now realize this is watercolor, so you don't wanna get it wet. If you uh, get it wet, some of this color might still transfer. Now I wanna show you, and I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope it works. I wanna show you when I take the tape off because we know this background is dry. The glue parts are not exactly dry. But in order to remove tape that you've put on a painting, and I've never done this when I've shown watercolor on video before, but what is suggested, of course it's, it's um, very hard for me to start it. I think I'm gonna start it down here instead. What you kinda wanna do is Pull it off at an angle like this, not straight across. 
you want to pull it at an angle slowly like this. And you see I'm revealing that the paint so far has not slid underneath that tape. This is why I do like the, the Frog brand because the Frog brand makes quite a seal on that and keeps the water from coming out. I, I used the Fog brand first when I made the barn quilt at the uh, Northeast branch, if you know the barn quilt that's hanging on the front of that building. That was house paint and the frog tape is something you usually use for painting inside or exterior um, homes. So if you were painting your bedroom and you wanted to block off the molding, this would be the proper um, tape to buy. It's a little bit more expensive than just using masking tape, but uh, a roll goes a far way. They do sell it in Hobby Lobby. <clears throat> so of course, <coughs> you know you do have the 40% off coupon uh, every time you go to Hobby Lobby. So you could use your 40% off coupon and get yourself a nice big roll of tape. Now, I'm very pleased that this is coming off this well. I was going to show you what to do if it does not come off well. Let's see, maybe the last one will show some leakage. No, it's not. Well, maybe at the corner. The corner's the toughest spot. Well, maybe there's a tiny little bit there, but it's not bad. Um, I was been following some artists online who are painting uh, watercolors like this, and when they get some leakage underneath, they're just taking a white gel pen and covering it up with the pen like so. So if you do get some leakage and there's a little bit of green showing right here, I just came with my, my white pen and covered it up. So what I would do at this point is I would take a piece of cardstock, I would cut it just a little bit bigger than my picture. And I like to attach them with double-sided tape. I put a line of double-sided tape top and bottom, and then very carefully lay it down, and it's complete. Now, don't forget to put your initials on it because it's a work of art that you created. And I like to sign the back of the card too. So think of doing that. So I hope that you enjoyed that. I'm going to show you a couple of things that uh, are would explain to you the Notan art. So if you're interested in pursuing this, the Notan is a Japanese term that means light and dark harmony. So you can see it's a two value study in black and white as a compositional tool. Sometimes it's just used as a tool, but as you can see, you could make some very interesting pictures with cut work like this. So that would be something considered no tan. I uh, did another heart picture like this if you wanted to get a little more complicated, but you see it's exactly the same type of thing with the heart. It hasn't been cut as many times and it's on the corners of a square. So you see that this is a very uh, cool thing to try to help develop your compositional tools, to how to see the difference in mirror images and values, and just another fun thing to do uh, in learning how we can best pursue our art. So I think that that's a beautiful picture to end with. I hope that you enjoyed making a card today and know that there are lots of people out there who would love to receive a card from you. It could be your family, it could be your friends. Um, I have had great difficulty seeing comments here. I'm gonna to try to, I see some people saying thank you. I appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, please pay, place them underneath and I will answer them right away after this class. I'm taping alone so I can't see all the comments while I'm working. So I hope you enjoyed this program and I hope you share this with someone and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Valentine's Day. This year, we all deserve it. I'll see you next time. 
at Adult Arts and Crafts from the Warren County Library. Thanks so much for coming. I appreciate it.